good morning everybody yeah i still see parents settling down so if you turn your bibles to genesis chapter 2 today we are going to look at uh, verse 18 to 24 but we'll be turning a lot of pages as you all know we are doing the series on gospel men and gospel women and today we are going to look at women the appointed helper but before we begin i just want to remind you the world that we live in we live in a world which is building this narrative that whatever god created beautiful holy they're redefining it as cruel unfair and unloving because in this sinful world to find happiness they teach the world teaches you can find only happiness through self assertion so that's why they promote pride own authority sin has tainted both the roles that god has instituted for men and women as head and helper however praise god in christ jesus we are redeemed we are forgiven for our sins and set free and now we have the gift of the spirit of god who helps us to submit to the roles that we were given with that said we'll go to genesis chapter 2 verse 18 to 24 creation account genesis chapter 2 was 18 to 24 then the lord god said it is not good that the man should be alone i will make him a helper fit for him now out of the ground the lord god had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them and whatever the man called every living creature that was its name. The man gives names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is at last, he is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Verse 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. Um, as we read this passage, we have been looking Genesis chapter 1 to 3 for a while. We can clearly see when God created mankind, God created man, but he created them male and female. Right? It's pretty clear. However, if you ask the same question now, what is a woman in the world? There's a lot of confusion. There is a man, uh, Matt Walsh, Daily Wire journalist who did traveled around the world and did a documentary asking each people group the definition of woman because the world has forgotten what man is what woman is right and we have seen here god has created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them male and female both are equal in essence equal in worth and dignity. However, they are not the same. There is distinction, not just biologically, but also functionally. Right? There is distinction biologically. And if, if you want to argue for women, God has given monthly reminders. And this is a distinction, biologically also. And even though so much I love my wife, I can't bear children. I can't say, Sharon, you bear one child, I'll bear another child. I can't say that. I can't do that. Biologically, you see the difference. Right? 
But today our focus is not to define women biologically. Today our burden is to look at true wo womanliness. And last time when we looked at true godliness in the man, we said Christ is the picture, is the model for a man to follow. He is the man's man. But what, what example we can point to for a woman? I would say Christ himself. Woman is godly when she submits to Christ and follows Christ. So today we will look into uh, the scripture portions, not just Genesis, but we will also look into other passages. And our goal is to find what is God intended meaning and the function of a woman as a suitable helper. Because as we read from this passage, the Lord said in verse 18, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Helper fit for him. Now at first glance, when we read that God created man, man and woman and woman as a helper for the man, we might think that woman is the one who makes man's life easy, easier, because she is a helper. So we need to define this word helper biblically. We need to define this word helper biblically. And if you, um, if you are raised in a family like mine, you might early in the morning, you will hear in this, Ma, where are my keys? The work belongs to the plumber's helper, not the plumber. In the same way, when we read the helper, uh, if you look, it, if you think like worldly, you'll think woman is a helper to make man's life easier, to clean, to clean the dirty work that man had made. However, the idea, that the, the, the word that is used here, the God intended meaning for this word is completely different. In the original language, it's the word that is used is azir, which means someone who helps, of course, but someone who supports, someone who strengthens. It is used in the context of rescue, or even war. And so what kind of support Eve is going to do here? In the broadest sense possible, she helps man in every area. But what does the text say? What is the context? It is important to know what the context is. To define this word helper, we need to look into the context. And if you remember the passage that we read, you might think it's a sermon for marriage. But this is, we are trying to look at who woman is. And in this context, as you see, it is... The, uh, the passage is uh, leading towards a marriage. You see, initially, God creating a man, and God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. And then God said, I will make him a helper fit for him. And then God creates women, brings in front of man, and man starts singing. This is the first words ever recorded, uh, first words ever uh, spoken and recorded in the Bible and this is the song that Adam sang for his wife. This is last, this is at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And verse 24 it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. This passage is leading towards marriage as you can clearly see. So this word as a, the support, the, uh, the, uh, the, the helper, uh, this word means definitely the one who is strengthening and supporting. But if you see, it's in the context of marriage. So a woman is helper for man to her husband, not for everyone else. So God created woman so that she might be a suitable helper for man in the marriage. Now, 
coming back to the uh, thought of the purpose the work that woman has to do what should she help what help she should offer to man again in the context we see god created man and woman in the image of god so god created man and woman to reflect god to imitate god and as adam man is in the pursuit of imitating god making god known and living to glorify god a woman helps him to do the job of making god known and glorify god that's that's the help that woman offers to the man in the marriage woman exists to make to help man imitate and glorify god and they both together do the same so the idea that women exist to make man's life easier is completely from the world that's not what scripture teaches but how are you today women when you hear your calling as a woman is to be the helper helper for man how do you receive it if you want to be a woman of god's own heart you have to seek what god wants you have to obey god you have to hate sin because god hates sin you have to do what god commands and you have to hate what god hates as jesus said if you love me obey my commandments women if you love jesus obey jesus command your helper helper to the man to your man so that you both reflect the image of god glorify god it gets better let's try to understand this word better helper this word again as i earlier mentioned azer this word does not it didn't have, doesn't have any connection to evid which is slave woman a helper not a servant or a slave for a man this occurs this word occurs 21 times and two times here and then 16 times it addresses god god was addressed as a helper in the bible in the if you see in exodus moses named his son eliezer which means the god of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of pharaoh exodus 18:24 psalm 121 we are all familiar with this psalm i lifted up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come you know the word that help same word it is used my help comes from the lord who made heaven and earth it is god who comes alongside us in our helplessness and helps us and if you say women are inferior to man because they are helpers you are saying god is inferior is it true because god is the one who is helping us you see god is not subordinate to his creatures so any idea that helper means inferior should be rejected so women are not inferior to man because of their calling they are equal in worth and dignity women are not inferior to man because it is god's appointed calling for women but the most resentment for this calling is because of sin if you remember genesis chapter 3 verse 16 it says genesis chapter 3 verse 16 to the woman he said i will surely multiply your pain in childbearing in pain you shall bring forth children your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you and as you have seen in the last part your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you 
women desire to rule over husband but husband rules over you and this is the curse what curse has made is that the perfect harmony that women and man had in their roles being the head and the helper it makes difficult for women to submit to her husband however some say it was part of the curse that women had to submit to man as a helper however if you are in christ if you put your faith in christ jesus you are set free from sin you are free and there is no difference like galatians 3:28 says there is uh, no difference like jews greek man women there's no difference you are redeemed now so women can take leadership roles because you are freed from sin is it really true imagine me having two heads i have a head which is equal size to two heads however it would be weird if i have two heads right and if you see a family where husband and women both act as heads it will be creepy as well it won't the, the that relationship will not stand so people there are some who say that this submission is because women had to submit because of sin and if you are freed from sin women are freed from sin and can reign can take over leadership lords quoting the same passage that we read genesis chapter 3 16 i i'll read again to the woman he said this is of this is after sin and god is um uh, speaking to women he says i will surely multiply your pain and childbearing this is a part of the curse and in pain you shall bring forth children your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you he shall rule over you because he will reign you man will reign you because of sin that's what some say however god is saying god has already designed that man is head and woman is the helper and woman has to submit to the leadership but what sin does is it makes things difficult because of sin woman desires to rule over husband but some have misunderstood this passage but it's easy to understand right is it easy for women to bear children imagine the conversation between husband and wife if husband uh, you know woman says uh, honey i think today is the due date i think i have to go deliver the baby let's go to high street order make food in mcd and then we'll go to jupiter close to the you know high street and then we'll pop the baby out and then come back take the order and we'll come back home you know it's not that easy right women still go through pain when when they're in labor we are still in this sinful world right as yes and amen when we put our faith in christ jesus christ has blotted all our sins and you will receive forgiveness complete forgiveness and you are redeemed from the curse of sin however we we are not still enjoying the final aspect of our salvation we st- we are still waiting for christ to return so until Christ returns or you meet Christ you will not leave this sinful flesh and as long as you live in this sinful flesh and in this fallen world you bear the consequences of living in this sinful world and sinful flesh and that's why there is pain even now when women bear children during labor and so since even sin still dwelling in us and we live in a sinful world so because of that women struggle even now even believers struggle to submit to their own husbands however but how does being saved being redeemed by christ help remember romans chapter 6:14 if sin will have no dominion over you why because you are under grace so through the spirit of god christ helps you to obey to your husbands 
and you will be uh, you know uh, again reflecting god's glory in your marriage so woman as god has designed to be the helper and she is complementary to man not a servant she is a uh, the same word helper was addressed to god and finally she is a helper to her man not all men as you have as we have already seen he said then the lord god said it is not good that the man sh- should be alone talking about adam i will make him a helper fit for him eve was fit for adam not for me not for any of you here eve was made fit for adam and as i earlier said the progression of the pro- this passage leads to the presentation of marriage adam needs a helper and god made a helper fit for him so every woman is a helper for, to her man not every man all men imagine if woman had to be helper for all men if men starts and keeps giving orders to women commanding orders to women whom should she show whom should she show importance to right if multiple men keep administrating her it would be chaos she is a helper for her man so woman is a helper the one who strengthens completes man that's the meaning of the word now well, let's look at the functioning as husband called to be the head last time we have seen he should be lovingly serve his wife lovingly provide protect his wife and the same way woman as a helper should with joy delightfully submits to her husband so let's look at our seven second point as women are helpers they should devote themselves to their role devoting to the role as helper as a girl and the in and we are reading uh, we will be reading two scripture portion ephesus 5 and titus 2 um however we live in a culture when we preach wives must submit to their own husbands they consider it is from like promoting slavery however this resentment is coming because of lack of understanding of what scripture says as we see genesis chapter 3 verse 6 satan went to the woman and deceived her the serp- serpent approached woman and uh, ignoring man strikes a conversation with the woman and he said did god actually say you shall not eat any of any tree in the garden you know he asked this question directly to the woman ignoring the man trying to put the thoughts that she didn't had and he tempted and caused eve to fall in sin and adam and eve together and satan has taken what is beautiful holy and powerful truth made it look ugly and frightening and undesirable now uh, when we say submission definitely the feeling come you know people are frightened i remember my own wife saying she was frightened because she had to submit all her life to me and it is true because we are sinful human beings uh, however it is christ who helps sin has tainted this but w- bible says as we see in ephesians chapter 5 was 22 to 
Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its saviour. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Wives should submit to their own husbands. It's it mentioned multiple times in the scriptures, the submission. So we have to also redeem this word submission. But before going to look at this word itself, I just want you to re remind this, that in the scriptures, it, it was commanded for all of us to submit to one another. Ephesians, the same chapter, if you read verse 21, it says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So we all have to submit to one another. We see in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, children obey your parents, it says. So students also, when you are uh, studying, they have to submit to the authorities in schools. And we should all submit to the governing authorities. Romans 13, 1, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. Bond servants, obey your earthly masters, Ephesians chapter 6. Church members, we should obey our elders, Hebrews 13, 17. Right? Obey your leaders, submit to them. For they keep watch over your souls. In addition to all these relations, women has specifically, women was asked specifically by God, women was commanded specifically to submit to their own husbands. And let me tell you, this is not my words, uh, this is God's words. And God says, wives submit to your own husbands. And you submitting to God's command is godly. You not submitting to God's command is ungodly, satanic. It's rebellion. Even after knowing when you don't submit. However, what does this word really mean? S submission. Let's define word submission. The Greek word submission, hupatasso, this word is combination of two words. Tasso, to put, and hupo means under. Which means, wives, you yourself place yourself, you place yourself, wives place yourselves under your husband's authority. This is not a good, good advice. This is not a good suggestion. This is a command of God. It's not an option. And this is not just Paul. It is the Spirit of God inspiring the authors of the Bible. Paul, even Peter said in chapter uh, 3 that they should also likewise submit to their own husbands. And he also gave the greatest examples. Right? He talked about Sarah obeyed Abraham. And look at the way Sarah obeyed Abraham. First, uh, first Peter chapter 3 verse 6, it says, Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Number one, this word literally means that women voluntarily place themselves under the authority of their own husbands because of the command that Christ has given. It's willful submission to her husband. Not because husband is smart or something. This is because God called women as a helper and she should function as a helper by submitting to her husband. Willfully, godly women submitted throughout the history. And greatest example for submission, Christ Jesus himself, Luke chapter, chapter 2, verse 521, it says, He went down with them, with his parents, and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. Imagine the Son of God placing himself under the authority of sinful human beings. What a great example. And the rest of the scriptures, if you have read the gospels, Jesus multiple times said in John chapter 3, 6 verse 38, said, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So, women, if you think submission, you know, you submitting to husbands is something inferior, you have to understand that Christ has submitted to Father. 
and we know from the scriptures philippians chapter 2 it clearly says jesus is equal with the father though he was in the form of god he did not count equality with uh, with god a thing to be grasped jesus is equal with the father however he submitted to father submission is to put yourself voluntarily under authorities okay submission is there in the bible however what is the extent how much should women submit to the man verse 24 paul says in chapter 5 of ephesians now as the church submits to christ so also wives submit in everything to their husbands everything how much does everything cover everything except when husband uh, commands what god prohibits you know she should submit to her husband in the lord everything but in the lord only exception is when your husband commands you to sin when your husband commands you to do what god prohibits because husband doesn't have authority over his wife to sin and at the same time another clarification when husband asks a wife to do something what she does not want to do it is not the same as what god prohibits so if husband ask a woman his wife to do something what she doesn't want to do she still have to do as long as it is in the lord you know for example you are attending this church and if you are a head of the family you are the husband you took the decision to attend a, a, a church and the wife says no i don't want to go there because you know i don't like this person i don't like i don't like the music or whatever it may be if the husband says no we are going to attend that church we are going to fellowship that church with that church a woman are to submit to their husbands Whom, husband doesn't have authority over his wife to sin however he is the one who takes decisions and at the same time submission means that that doesn't mean that woman cannot sh- you know share her thoughts you know share her wisdom of course she has to share wisdom however the final decision rests on the man the husband head of the family what if my husband is an unbeliever peter gives an example peter peter talked about this in first peter chapter 3 verse 1 it says likewise wives be subject to your own husbands so that even if some do not obey the word talking about the husbands who are not believers they may be one without a word by the conduct of their wives you see again even here you have to submit to an unbelieving husband in the lord how serious is this command it's a matter of your uh, eternal life you know it reveals your relationship with jesus in john chapter 14 15 as i earlier mentioned jesus said if you love me obey my my commandments if you love jesus obey jesus commandments and that's why matthew chapter 7 jesus said not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven and for those who do not obey christ just profess lord lord by their mouth jesus said i declare to them i never knew you depart from me you workers of lawlessness jesus is angry here when he makes this statement depart from me 
you workers of lawlessness. Get out of my house. You know, that's the tone. Get out, get out from me. It all boils down to your relationship with Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. God says, your husband may not be wise, maybe a child, may be foolish, may be not godly. However, that's not an excuse because God calls wives to submit. That's your role. And at the same time, men, it's not your duty or to command your wife to obey you. You can't demand your wife's obedience. You come, God has given you a command to love your wives. But today is all about women, so we'll come back to the topic. Men already had last week. So finally, Woman as a helper, she, func she functions by submitting to her husband. And also, she manages her household. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Verses 3 to 5. Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. says, Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much, to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Here we see nearly 11. I have, I have counted uh, all of the uh, sorry, gossipers. And thirdly, not slaves to much wine. Fourthly, teaching women and training women. And to do what? Mm, fifthly, fifth one, loving husbands. Sixth one, loving children. Self-control, pure, working at home. Kind, submissive to their own husbands. And if you see among all this, there are two uh, primarily works that were mentioned. Teaching women and training women. That's ministry in the church, which we'll see next time when we come. And secondly, working at home. So apart from ministry in the church, discipling women, women are workers at home. And this is the topic that brings a lot of heat. Um, and, you know, uh, are women allowed to work? Uh, uh, Bible Does Bible allow women to work outside? There is no prohibition. However, there is an exception. Uh, you don't bring it to me. You take it to the Lord. You, you, you discuss. You know, you pray, you ask God. But one thing is clear. If you read all this list from the Bible, there's a lot on your plate. You know? There's a lot to do. However, now women don't want to be workers at home. Why? Satan, ha Satan has already deceived. You know? It's anti-God. Uh, whatever Satan brought into this world is anti-God, anti-Christ. The word workers at home literally means the ones who are working at home, managing household. It simply says the sphere of women's work is home. It doesn't mean that women should be locked in your home 24 hours. But that's it's home is her sphere. That's where she that's where she works and that's what she works for. That's her domain. And Proverbs 31 woman. She left home, but she worked for home. It's in that sphere. However, she 
kept her responsibility as a homekeeper and then was able to manage everything else. For a mother to get a job outside the home and send children to some kind of daycare, I, I'd say it's, you're shrinking. You are belittling God and rejecting the God-given responsibility. It is a failure from women's hand. Because it is women's responsibility to take care of home. And especially if you look at the way God has made women, biologically speaking also, children need mother during the early days of their life. It's required. That's how it is designed. Even if you wanted to work outside the home to pay for your children better, for better education or to send them to Christian colleges, that is also not godly decision. You know? Because as Stephen mentioned at the parents' dedication, it is your role Parents, for you, this is your role to take care of your children. And mothers, it's your role to raise your children. And now we live in a generation where life is very easy. Consider the generation where Paul is writing. They don't have grinders. Right? Those are, to make those, it would be very difficult. Right? We can order online. We have all ready to cook stuff. We have cookers. We don't have to go outside. We have tap water. You know. Compared to the world, Paul writes, now we are in a very comfortable generation. Right? So there is more time you have. And it should be used wisely. So rather than being distracted by what world defines women is, we have to look to the Bible and it is dignified. It is honorable when woman works at home. Like Stephen earlier, last time when he preached, mentioned, somehow world has convinced women to work for the strangers outside is so glorious than to work for her own family. My mother, my, my mother is just a homemaker. She's just a, no, even the way we communicate also translates, you know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work. There's a lot on your plates already, women. And it is glorious if you remain faithful to your calling as a helper and submit to your own husbands and love your family and be the manager of the household. That is glorious. And I want to close with one scripture portion. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Thank you so much for patiently listening to me, a young man preaching about women. Uh, however, this is not my words, words from scriptures. So let's look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Sisters, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and transformed. Don't be deceived by the world. Let's close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you for our time this morning in your word. What a wonderful design. Your word clearly says you created man to be the head and to serve his wife and family lovingly. 
and you call women to the be the helper the one who strengthens and you called women to be the helper by submitting to her husband and to love her family i pray father for ccc especially for all the families for the for all the couples that you help them to look into the scriptures and be convicted and to live by the convictions built from the scriptures father help them father to take bold decisions father i pray for all mothers especially as we have looked at the women's role the gospel women i pray that you will help them to break all the ideas from the world and trust you and willingly submit to you and willingly submit to their husbands father we pray for all ccc as a whole that we will be people who will live for the honor and glory of christ in christ jesus name we pray amen